I'm back at home. <laughs> it is now two and a half weeks post St. George. spent a lot of time, I was going to say not doing very much, but that's actually a complete lie. I was still doing quite a lot, just not triathlon based. A few days in Bryce Canyon, doing some walking with my dad and my brother's fiance. In some ways not ideal, I'm a recovery prep, but I think our first walk was like an eight mile hike going up and down canyons. Rented some e-bikes that run out of battery and we had about an hour and a half cycling back uphill into a headwind on these really heavy bikes, which was, yeah, again, not ideal. But like really fun and really great, like really great part of the world. Like the scenery is just amazing. Haven't really seen anything like it. And then went to Yosemite for four days, which our younger brother came and joined us as well. And again, just lots of hiking and generally walking about. We did one really big day that ended up being about 36, Okay. My younger brother and I ran the last like 12k of it, which was like a lot of downhill and then flat on the bottom. I think I actually had worse doms from that than I did from St George because <laughs> that was only a week after as well. So I think like that combination as well, not the best thing to do a week after the race, but it was really fun and it was beautiful. So that was great. And then I had a couple of days in San Francisco, basically just cruising around all the coffee shops, eating pastries and going out for some nice dinners. That was like really, like really nice to mentally just completely switch off from triathlon, spend some time with some of my family and I like actually felt like a really good break. And then I flew back to London. I actually met my new nephew who I've not met yet, who's about three months old, so that was great. Had a den office with work, which was actually very strange. That's the first time I've been in the office for two and a half years. <laughs> met loads of my team that I've never met before. Good to kind of have a day with the team. Quite a nice way of like easing back into work. So it was obviously kind of looking at team strategy and things like that and not actually getting stuck back into emails. And then I had some time on Friday to catch up with some of my other friends. Felt like a bit of a whirlwind, kind of a couple of days in London, trying to see as many people as possible. And then came back home. And since getting home, I've just been trying to sort of ease back into a bit of training. I've got a sub eight coming up in which I've got to try and help Kat go as fast as possible. So I was like, I probably need to <laughs> find some fitness. Done like a couple of little spins on the bike so far, but I'm gonna get out and do a longer TT ride this afternoon. And then we've got all of next week to kind of practice as a team work out exactly how it's going to work with who swaps in where and what kind of pace we need to go. Really looking forward to that. That's going to be just like a really fun week. What's my role? General entertainer. <laughs> Being like the really good wind guard for Kat. <laughs> it's been a lot of chat about how short a lot of our team is, which I think is, uh, I mean, obviously true. We are all quite short, but I think a bit irrelevant because everyone's strong enough that it's not really going to matter. So my main role is I'm going to be the person, hopefully, and again, like I say hopefully, because we might end up changing things around depending on when we've practiced. The way we're seeing it is I will be the person sat in front of Kat that will keep us on the back of the teams as the teams kind of roll in and out. So like I might have to do a little bit of, it won't be like properly surging. So again, it's trying to keep it as smooth as possible for Kat, but I might have to put in a bit of a push to get us back on if it's broken a little bit as teams roll in and out and also keep the link of comms between Kat and the girls in front. So like, I don't know, say she's 
finding it way too easy and we need to try and push it on a bit or say she's maybe not finding it quite as easy and we need to potentially dial it back a bit. That would be my role of kind of making sure that it gets communicated in the right way. So I think one of the things that probably like Kat and I more than the others are most wary about, I think is that whole sort of team time trial dynamic. It's obviously not something we've done <laughs> and it is obviously a bit of a skill and there's a bit of danger element to it so I think yeah I see my role as the kind of <laughs> the protector <laughs> in some ways of I'm trying to keep cat safe I've got to do whatever I can to keep that comms going and make sure that she's kind of as happy as she can be and getting set up for a speedy run and then I might jump in on a bit of a run it basically depends a bit on how hard I've had to go on the bike do I have any legs left I mean ideally it should be relatively easy for me sat on the back of the girls but with like a few pushes but I think like theoretically it shouldn't be as hard as an Ironman bike so I should <laughs> so I should uh, should be able to jump in for Summer Cat's run we'll see and like she's got like three other paces on the run so it's, it would more be I don't know if she gets a bit bored of them and she needs someone else to come in and <laughs> give her some different chat she's kind of said pacing's not an issue for her on the run so it's more of a keeping it fun, keeping the motivation high. It's just gonna be like a really good week. After that, I've been trying to do a bit of season planning because like basically up to this point, I was like, I just wanna get St George out of the way, see how that goes, and then make a bit of a call after that. Cause I definitely, I'd considered maybe doing Challenge Roth or doing another Ironman kind of in that space. 99% sure I'm not going to do another Ironman now for Kona. I say that because you never know what might happen. <laughs> I don't feel the need to do another Ironman and I think actually I'd probably benefit from doing a few shorter races in the build-up. So very rough plan is look at a European, like one or two European 70.3s kind of end of June, beginning of July. Go and do the Canada PTO race uh, at the end of July. Mainly because that one, I wouldn't necessarily want to be doing that kind of big transatlantic trip back again and then back over again for Kona. A, the prize money is pretty good, especially if I can make top 10, which if I have a good race, I'd hope to. And also they are weighting the points quite highly. Um, so it's 5% weighting towards our end of year rankings, um, but they're also giving it a 10% weighting for Collins Cup qualification. The likelihood of me <laughs> getting anywhere near Collins Cup is like minimal because that European team is so strong but I think if I can at least say I gave it the best shot in case of other people getting injuries or things like that then I like I feel like I kind of have to do that to give myself that shot. So that PTO race then basically come back get another good block in and then I'm basically weighing up at the moment between doing a 70.3 before Kona or doing the Dallas race, the Dallas PTO race before Kona. But yeah, very unsure about the Dallas race because it's only two and a half weeks before Kona, which in my mind is not ideal. Again, have to weigh up the potential benefit of prize money and ranking points versus impact on Kona performance.